Can you come on and see right there? So, are there nets you're doing all right today?
So I, I don't remember. I think he. I mean, he. He. He needed a place to stay for the night. And mm -hmm. I think he had a bag with him. I don't know if they searched that. Okay. I did not. Um. So did you stay there all night after the cops left? Or? No, I left a, a little while later. What well, about what time? I have no idea. Okay. I, but I you didn't stay make, until in the morning. I wanted to make sure that I was okay mm -hmm. to leave. Okay. Um, and that so you say you how long you known the guy? It's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What do you know him by? What's his name? You know his last name? No. No. No, honestly, I don't remember. He's been over my coffee shop a couple times. Um, he, uh, I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, he was trying to get a, uh, a GED. Uh, I was trying to help him through that. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GED. Uh, and then when I lost contact with him for four or five months, when I guess when he went to California or wherever, um, I just assumed that he had, you know, I didn't know that's where he, where he went. Well, how did y'all meet? At the coffee shop. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure of, of that. Um, but what coffee shop or not? That, that's my guy on the coffee shop. Oh, what on, it's called Holy Grounds Coffee. Okay. And uh, uh, 8613 Southwestern. Okay. And... Um, I'm pretty sure that's how we met. I honestly don't remember. Um, it's the only place I probably would have met the guy. Um, so anyway, he, uh, he's been over a couple times there. Um, when he came back, you know, he, uh, he was, well, in fact, he told me he wanted to go be an anesthesiologist or something. And I you know, said, so you've got to get, you can't go without a high school diploma. You can't do anything without a high school diploma. And so, um, you know, I know that the day after the incident happened, he was going to test for the GED. I strongly encouraged him to do that. Um, and um, the night that, uh, that he called me, um, he said he just needed to get out of his house. Um, I'm assuming I have, I mean, I thought he had told me that he lived with some friends. And um, he had told me in the past that, you know, it was hard for him to get clean because he was always with his friends that, that uh, you know living with them, um, and so you know uh, when he called and said he needed to get out of there, you know that he had to test the next day. Then the choice was to bring him over to my house, which I don't think my wife would have appreciated that very much. Um, she probably would have been okay with it, but I just, I just felt it figured it'd be easier just to get him a place. Um, and then we decided to talk. So. Okay, so. Um <coughs> Um, how do you, when you, when you, do you text him or how do y'all communicate? It's usually phone calls. Phone calls? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's interesting because, um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says he had, that he had with you using an app called Kick. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> he, there's a pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with the guy that is you that he um, <clears throat> that is online or the kick kick ID is Jamie Tilly um, and you told officers that night that that's who what what your online he, he calls me Jamie uh -huh. and I'm not sure why okay and um, anyways so we we've, we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about um he says i need money for spring break uh jamie tilly says i don't uh, really have any legitimate things i need help with right now would you be interested in sexual stuff he says yes this goes on about how i come get you blah 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 um we go on he says uh he starts calling this guy daddy he says hurry up daddy i'm super horny Hey, keep me updated because I want you bad, Daddy. Uh, the guy named Jamie Tilly says I'm going to uh, I'm going to fuck you like a good little boy if you keep calling me Daddy. This goes on and on and on and on. Well, then it gets to the end. And it says <coughs> it says okay, I'll be down the street, a couple houses, in about ten minutes or so. He says okay, um, 
So I have so I have let me know so I have an idea. Then that person says I thirty five about the exit in Force at Fourth Street. And then it says I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness <coughs> pardon me. We've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to the hotel, Super Royal First to Fourth and Eastern at the gas station. Uh, and then to the circle or Circle K. Yeah. This is the gas station. Yeah, at the gas station. And then fought to the and then to the Super Eight where where the guy in the white uh, Jeep Cherokee and him go in, check check uh, check into a room and then go back out and go into a room one twenty. Alright? Uh, and they sit there until the police show up where she then calls his dad and um uh, and he calls a intern calls the police and the police show up there to one one twenty, knock on the door, and then you come out. So again I ask, you told officers that you have online identity Jamie. Um this guy or uh, Hagen saying that he was talking to you, we got a witness putting you picking him up at the same time that this message was sent saying I'm here. So I g I kinda gotta say that Jamie Tilly's you. It's not me. It's not you. It's okay. We communicated by phone. Um, there, there was no sexual intention that night. Okay. Um, anything you have? So how did you meet? Um, I want to say it was at our coffee shop. Okay. Uh, so, like, he just walks in, you guys take up a conversation, become friends? Yeah, it's happened many times. Invite him over to your house. Has your wife met him? I think so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you say he's come to your house several times to play video games? I think just once. Come to your house once to play video games? Uh, and then you guys met at the coffee shop a couple of times? Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time? Yeah. And he posted in Casual Encounters? No. Okay. Um, well, the... In this can, can I add, is, mm -hmm. is he legitimately underage? Yeah. And he was the first time that you met him. And He's I said, 16. I, I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows because we had a discussion about it. And at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. In this conversation, it says, she needs me to go to the store for her. My three-year-old is sick. That's one of the things I've been dealing with tonight. We're not going to have enough time. Can we get together tomorrow May, after one? I'll get, I'll get even, I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. Um, it goes on talking about coffee the coffee shop, shop my coffee shop. Um, I'll be alone in about 10 minutes at my coffee shop. Uh, he says, can I help you with anything for spring break? Again, you said just customers, but I'll leave in here close to eight. Okay. Um, I'll be your slave. Mm, that sounds nice. I mean, we go on and on and on. And how old is your youngest child? Uh, five months. Okay. So he's telling me that when he first met you through Craigslist, that you that he had posted an ad in Casual Encounters, and that he had a lot of responses for it, but that you said that you wanted him to mess around with your wife while you watched. He said that he showed up to do that, or you guys got together and started talking about that. He found out your wife was pregnant and then said that it never happened because she was pregnant. So here's the deal, Ralph. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. We're not saying you're a bad guy. We're not saying you set out thinking that this is some 15-year-old kid you're going to go bang. We're not saying that. We're saying, hell, maybe you didn't know how old he was. I don't know. I think you probably did based on what he's telling me, but things are what they are. Tell us the truth. Get it out there. Let's get this over with, get this behind us, so we can all move on. I'm telling you that. No, you're not. You're telling us part of what happened, but you're not telling us what's going you on. You told the officers there that you had an online identity of Jamie. He's talking about, you, you talk about in these texts when you, when this kick account, about your kids and your kid being sick and your coffee shop and that you got customers left and that you close at 8. I mean, it's clearly you. It's clearly and you. And we've got a witness that puts you there. When you I say... I absolutely picked him up. When you say, I'm here... The witness is waiting down the street because she thought it was jacked up. She thought it was jacked up that he wouldn't tell her where he was going or anything like that. So she sits down the street and waits. 
And then she sees him going to the Super 8 Hotel with with you, and then she gets scared and wondering what the heck's going on, so she calls the police, or calls his dad, and who, who in turn calls us. So here's the deal. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're trying to give you an opportunity, all right, to help yourself out here, all right? We have a electronic, I mean, we have his device, we have, these are just photos of it. We actually have downloaded the entire device now. So we have everything that y'all said that night, everything. The thing about it is that tablet, once you, once you sent the message saying I'm here, that tablet was never on the, never in, on the internet again. So the kit conversation couldn't delete. So we have the entire conversation. But you go with it. Okay. Yeah, you can look at it. You have the, we have the entire conversation because it never hit the network again. This is a bad deal. This is this is um, uh, prostitution of with a minor, prostitution within a thousand foot of a church, which are both felonies, and then transporting for the purposes of prostitution, which is a misdemeanor. I'm telling you, that's not me. That clearly is you. That's a, that that Ralph. That's a lie. You're lying to us right now. That's clearly you. No one else. With daughter sick, coffee shop, I'm here and you're there. That's clearly you. I don't know who else you could have been talking to. There Well, well, you're, well you're, I agree with you. you. Nobody you're you're at a coffee shop and has a kid, sick kid and all this stuff. And it's, showed it, up. it's you. He's and, and, and here's the deal. He says it's you that he's talking to. You show up with condoms, he shows up with lotion. I mean that's not true at all. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag, the cop song. There, that's just not absolutely not true. I did not show up there for any sexual thing. Well, then there's also weed that was in a green plastic container, marijuana that was in a green plastic container with labels from Colorado that was in the room. Did you ever touch that bottle? No. So there's no way your fingerprints will be on it? No. Okay, because okay, we have the bottle. I don't know what to tell he you. He says, matter of fact, what? he says when the police knocked on the door that y'all were smoking, y'all were both smoking marijuana. He said that he brought a gram when you brought a gram, and you guys rolled a huge blunt, and that you guys were planning on messing around and just hadn't got there yet. And that he was going to do you a favor by whatever it was you guys were going to do, and that you were going to do him a favor by kicking him some money for spring break. Ralph, like I said, we don't think you're a bad guy. We think you made a bad decision. There's a big difference. I don't know. I just don't know why you would do that. I honestly don't know. Because it's true. It's not true. I mean, he's 17. He he's 17. About that too. Okay, well... Well, for all practical purposes, let's say he did lie about that, all right? Jamie Tilly is you, and I can prove it. So, at, at minimum, you met with a guy at a hotel to pay him for sex. Within at a minimum. Within at a minimum. Feet of the church. Yeah, within the thousand feet of the church, which is a felony in itself. So, at minimum, that's what it is. All right? At minimum. So, you know... I'm giving you an opportunity here, and he told me I shouldn't, but I am. I'm giving you an opportunity to do it, to, to take responsibility for it and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Um, if you don't want to take it, that's fine, okay? I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow, all right? First thing tomorrow morning, I'm taking this case to the Clinton County District Attorney's Office, okay? Um, I'm going to suggest that they file charges for solicitation of a minor, um, possession or uh, solicitation, pardon me, prostitution within a thousand feet of a uh, church, and transporting for the purposes of pro transporting for the purposes of prostitution. Okay, and then they're going to decide whether or not they're going to file charges or not. Um, obviously, I've given you the opportunity. I'm giving you an opportunity to help to help yourself out to tell us what happened. Um, I everything that I'm telling you, I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. 
So, um, I know that's that, that's why we're sitting here so strongly telling you your line because we can prove the the Jamie Tilly identity. We can prove that identity is you. I mean, amazing things that we can do with 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 electronics and stuff like that that we can that we can recover and stuff like that and with warrants and everything. So I, I I'm telling you right now, but beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's you. And if you want to move forward from this with keep saying that's not you, then that's fine. But I don't want I don't want to be here not giving you an opportunity to to set the straight set set it straight and tell the truth. It doesn't sound like anything I say is gonna help. Mm, okay. I mean the truth and helps. And just so you know that I was also exchanged dick pics at one point. Um, and when you hopefully you didn't take a picture of your dick with your phone because that's going to tag it whenever you send it to somebody. No, I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't understand why he would do this. I really don't. It's really his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said he knows you because, like you're saying, coffee shop, all that. Said you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. I just don't understand why he would do that. He has nothing to gain from this. Except screwing me. How does that help him? I have no idea. Yeah, well, I mean, he has nothing why, to gain. Why, why would that screw him? on probation or whatever. How, he has no idea who you are. He thinks your name is Jamie. He has no idea what your real name is. None. He referred to you as Jamie the whole time I'm talking to him. So it's not like he's going to get anything from any of this. It's not like he gains anything from this. Have you got your phone with you right now? No. Where is it at? Uh, honestly, I lost it. <clears throat> lost your phone. Because you and I both know what would be on that phone. There's nothing on that phone. You can tag it or whatever. I mean... So other than kicks, how did you communicate with him? Did you email him? I don't think I've ever had his email address. Okay. Um, but mostly it was in person, I'll be honest. Okay. Like anytime that we uh, got together, it was, you know, he, like I said, he came to the house once. And we've only, you know, been in met in person two, maybe two or three times. Um. Prior to the evening that we're talking about, how much sexual stuff had you guys done together? Nothing. So that was going to be the first time? We weren't doing anything. And not when we got there, you weren't, but that was the plan for that evening. No. Clearly it was. Sir, I'm telling you it wasn't. I don't have any legitimate work for you, and you're just doing sexual stuff. Would you be interested in any sexual stuff? He says yes. Then it gets, I mean, it gets worse on down through here, as far as talking about it. It says, I mean, at one point, 
I don't know why I may have said this earlier. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck you like a good little boy if you keep calling me daddy. He goes, yes, daddy, please. Did you ever have sex with him? No, never. Did you ever give him a hand job? No. Did he ever give you a hand job? I've never even seen him naked or even asked. So, this is going to be the first time that any of that had ever, ever happened. No, sir. Well, you can't help with that with this stuff. You can definitely help with my cock, though. That's another statement. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going through reading what you wrote. Because I can, I can prove that you wrote it. I mean, that that's you. So, I'm just letting you know so you know what's uh, what's coming down the pipe. So, how did you, if that's not you, how did you contact him last night? Or that night? I think he called me. He didn't have a phone. Uh, I'm sure he called me. That's all I can say. I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, well, he called me and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there at a certain amount of time and I got there. Did you did you use this phone that you've lost? That was the only phone I had. Okay. What was that number? Uh, 265... Of the phone that you lost? Oh no, the phone I, no, my phone was was the number I gave you earlier. That's my cell phone. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that's lost? Uh, well, I use the uh, I use uh, Hangouts for uh, for Google numbers. Um, I've always used them for all of my businesses, and so it would have been two six five. I can't remember the last four. Explain that to me. What, what does that mean? Like when you, it's like when you call him or he calls you, he calls you on this two six five number, mm-hmm. yeah. and that goes to your cell phone mm-hmm. via Google Hangouts. Yeah, it was like it's a forwarded number. A Google it's Voice number? No, it, no, it goes to directly to my to my number. Okay. And so you called him back and said, "I'm here." Right. Okay. And what number would you call? Well, I think I just told him I'd be there in 20 minutes or whatever. And then he saw you when you got down the street? Okay. Well, as far as I know, I, you keep saying down the street. I went to the, the house that he told me to go to. What house is that? Do you remember? 90, maybe 912, 916, something like that. Okay. Uh, Lose it in or whatever it's called. Yeah. yeah um, and, uh, you know, that's where he told me to meet him, and, you know, I'm trying to think of, I called him when I got there, I don't think I did. No, I did because I saw him on the porch. Okay. And you think that what you've told us today is going to make sense to a jury of your peers? All I can say is the truth, sir. And then you're not. I agree. All you can say to help yourself out is the truth, but you're not doing that. So, this 219 number, you say you lost the, the handset? After I called you, I apparently have left it on top of my car or something. I tried to find it because I needed the call. Uh, someone else. So you just recently lost it. Yeah, I talked to you when I was um, about to leave my house, um, and I went back and looked on the ground. I mm-hmm. Nope. That is it. We gave it a shot. Yep. Do you have any questions?
Okay. Any other questions? I'm trying to think of any. Okay. The conversation that you have there, how 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 lengthy is it? How long does it go? Is it just one night? Is it more than a week? Is it a month? This one that we have right here is just that night. But we have others. Other what? Conversations. In what form? Same the same messenger? Huh? The same messenger? I don't know. I'm gonna have to get with we don't we'll have it at I think he said four, four this afternoon. So we took his device. What we did is we took his device. We took there was two devices. We took them. We forensically. <coughs> uh, we have a guy who forensically examines them. Then what they do is they take everything, everything off of it. Now if it leads us to another device, we get a search warrant or a court order or to another account. Say, for instance, in this particular thing. Uh, <coughs> This Jamie Tilly, all right. We we will we could we can get the IP address that's used all the IP addresses that's used with that account, all right? And we can track that IP address back to a handset. Like so, say for instance, <coughs> um, uh, the IP address that he uses, we'll track it back to uh, a network that he uses. If it's a if it's a uh, wireless network. Then it'll have the, it'll be that one and stuff like that. So we have several devices that we're that we're looking at now. Okay, not sure what all that means. But well, his device, his devices. We're we're taking we're getting everything off of the two devices that we have of his. We're taking all that stuff off, all right. And our guys going through them one by one and sending us different IP addresses to look at. What it comes down to is the reason we have those conversations is that when we turned the candle on, those are the ones on there, so we took pictures of those, and then we gave them to the forensics guy. And what he'll do is he'll go get more in depth, but that way he and I don't screw it up uh, by trying to fiddle with the damn thing. So we have um, more conversations. I just don't know what what platform they're on because all we did is what was up on the tab. We took pictures of what, what was up on the tablet then. So I, we have more we have more conversations. I just don't know what platform they're on. I'll know tonight. Because uh, he'll be done with both tablets today. So. And so you don't know how long this conversation has been going on or anything right now? Correct. Yeah. So basically, all that can happen is at this point is that <laughs> we get more evidence about what's going on. Because there's nowhere to go from here. Well, I'm just but to more to add to it. I can find. I know you guys don't believe me, and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise unless I have something to show you, and I, I just don't know. I find it hard to believe that you magically lost your phone on the way over here as well. It's not the first time, sir. Well, and, and just look at it. Okay, take all this crap in, the last com in this conversation that we've had out of it, all right? So just put yourself in my shoes, okay? So you got a guy who gets caught in a room with uh, a minor, or in a hotel room with a minor. Um, and he comes in and talks to us, knowing that he's had a conversation with this minor on an electronic device, all right? Probably his phone, because of the way he was at the sh he was at the store. He was at the guy's store. He was in his car. So more than likely, it was on a guy on, on his phone. So you're coming in um, blind, not knowing also other. Extremely nervous. Well, I got I you. I know, you. but 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 put yourself in my shoes. You're coming in this blind, only knowing that we're going to want to talk to you about you know the hotel room, and you know all of a sudden you come in and you don't have a phone 
and you, you, I know you live with your phone. You have to. So that's just strange to us, you know. Is your phone <coughs> is your phone on you right now? No, it's, it's not. Is it in your car? No. Can I look at your car? Uh, sure. Okay. When did you drive up here tonight? Sorry. When did you drive up here tonight? When? What? What vehicle did you drive up here? My car. What is your the Jeep? Oh, the white Jeep. Mm -hmm. Correct, Turkey. What year is it? Have you talked to him since that night? No. I honestly would have loved to have talked to his parents. Um, I had no idea that he was still with his parents. I wouldn't have been with a minor. Well, you knew that he was kicked out of high school. Yeah, I knew, no, I knew that. Well, he told me he dropped out of high school. Okay, you knew that he dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. And that he was trying to get his GED. Right. How old did you think he was? 20. Well, when, he, when, when, I, when we met, he told me he was 20. Guys, I'm, t I'm just as why this is just so, I don't understand why you would do this. Because that's all we've ever talked about, is just life and just trying to get, get him better, I guess. I had no idea he lived with his parents. Is he still in high school? Mm -hmm. So he is out of high school. Like, did he graduate? And unfortunately, in these type of in these type of deals, you get one you get one shot at talking to it. So make sure you you got all the questions answered that you uh, that you can think of. How long you own the coffee shop?
So this Kick Messenger, have you ever used it? No. I've heard of it. Um, obviously I checked my daughter's phone to see if it's on there. How's your daughter? Thirteen. What kind of phone was it that you lost? Samsung. I may find it. I'm going back where I drove. I wish I could say it's the first time it's happened, but... So why did you tell the officers there that you you had an online identity by Jamie? I didn't say that. I said that he's called me Jamie. <clears throat> well, I don't I don't I don't mean to to uh, you did because we got body cameras and I actually saw it. So I mean there was it was they were talking to him. They were talking to you, <coughs> and you said you had a home, that you went online or had an online identity of Jane. That's it. You didn't say Tilly, the last one, but you said Jane. I don't remember that, sir. Okay. He asked. I remember him asking what my name was. You, you you asked me about email conversations earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find something for you guys. I, is there anything there that shows what I'm saying on email? Because I honestly don't remember if I've ever emailed him. Yeah, there's shit ton of emails on that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. That's what I was asking. If you remember anything. Uh, I, I gave the officer my email address the other night. Um, I guess I'll search and see if there's any. I'm just. I'm just trying to think of anything.
had mentioned something about spring break. Can you explain that to me? You said he needed money for spring break. Like in what sense? Was he going somewhere? I don't know. He didn't say. Okay, so he's... No, it wasn't... The spring break was last week, right? This week. In some places, some places it's next week. I think more is this week, though. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> but it probably wouldn't matter to him if he's not in high school, I guess. I don't know if he's still a friend, though, or in high school. There's really not any way around it. How many times has he been on the second floor of the coffee shop? He never has been. So he wouldn't be able to describe what it looks like? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's not like private or anything. I mean, anybody can go up there. In fact, it's, it's an open office. So you asked me earlier if there had been any sexual contact in the past. Is he alleged that? He said you guys kissed. When? Before he went before May of last year. I mean, that's nothing, but still that's never happened either. Just like Jamie Tilly's not you? Just like it's somebody else with kids and daughters in the coffee shop. Somebody else who's there. Man, you made a bad decision. You know, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you made a bad decision. It's not the end of the world. Hmm. And if I can't prove otherwise that it is the end of the world, then I can't think of any other proof that I can show you. There's nothing. Because there's no... I mean, There absolutely would be. If what, we have, I had, what we have is the truth. If I had phone calls or if I had... But you don't because they don't exist. What we have is the truth. You know it. You know, I never would have thought to have to, to record a phone call or anything with a guy. I mean, he's... It was recorded. That's what we've got pictures of. I'm the conversation was recorded. I mean, that, that that is so clearly you. You and I both know that's you. Anyone we show that to is going to know that's you. 
Well, that's the problem. It's the truth. What I'm saying is the problem is that for some reason, you think that if you stick your head in the sand and ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not. Your best bet is to tell us the truth, tell us what happened, and then move on from this. Make this a bump in the road, not the road. I mean, it's that simple, really. This is not a defining moment. This is just a moment. No. This is, every, you've had other things happen in your life that were awful at the time, and then now that you look back at them, they're still awful, but they didn't change who you were. They didn't make... It didn't... It's a bump. That's all it is. It doesn't change the fact that you're a good person, or that you care about your family. That doesn't, none of that changes. But the reason you're having trouble thinking of something to say is because you know there's nothing you can I'm say. I'm having trouble thinking of something to say. I'm trying to Look, you're trying to decide whether or not you should tell us what happened. No, I told you everything. Okay. So we done. I can't think of anything else. And no phone on you, no phone in your car? No. Do you want to find patch it out real quick? Sure. Okay. <coughs> no, I said, hell, I should have said that before. Sit down. You want to get in the car with you?